Good evening, and welcome back to the Masonic Roundtable, a weekly hangout where Masons from around the country get together to talk about Masonic news and opinions in a friendly and social manner. Remember that the standard thought and disclaimer does apply here for tonight's broadcast. The thoughts and opinions here um, are solely those of the participants and do not represent any Grand Lodge statements or positions. Please keep your comments open to the public and on the level. Tonight, as usual, we're soliciting questions and comments from you via Twitter or Facebook at Mason Roundtable or with the hashtag TMR Episode 20, TMR Episode 2-0. You may see us a little different tonight. And we'll... what, what are you Whoa, guys, who, guys, who is guys, this guy? What are you guys doing over here? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> wow. Oh, hey, look. I'm, I'm your piece. Well, this is, this is crazy. We have three hosts. <laughs> In the same room. It is ridiculous. We are going to have so much fun tonight. Uh, we're glad that everybody's watching. Tonight, uh, tonight, of course, is, is a very special episode. But uh, let's hit it off with Masonic News first, that was John. such a cheesy intro. <laughs> it I was. Have to say, well done, sir. Well done. And you know what? Everybody on the audio podcast is now going to have to go look up the YouTube video on www.masonicroundtable.com. The Masonic Roundtable. The Masonic Roundtable.com to see that amazing intro that we had tonight. <laughs> Segway. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do quick introductions. My name is John Ruark. I am the past master of the Patriot Lodge number 1957 in Fairfax, Virginia. I am Jason Richards. I'm the senior deacon of Acacia Lodge number 16 in Clifton, Virginia. Uh, Rob Johnson, uh, Waukegan Lodge number 78, senior warden. A battle there. And I am Juan Sepulveda from Eola Lodge number 207 <laughs> in Orlando, Florida, and the host of the Winning Stairs podcast. Great. I'm Nick, Nick Johnson, and I'm uh, a past master of Corinthian Lodge number 67 in Big Time Farmington. And oh, and I have this blog thing, but I'll talk about it later. What is it called? Uh, something yeah, about uh, millennials and Freemasons. I don't know. It's so weird. Millennial Freemason. Uh, oh, dot com. com, right? Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. It, it, it's it's Ooh, French. Dot com, yes. Nice. <laughs> okay, Masonic news. Let's see. We've heard that Chris Hodap has been having some issues. Uh, Robert, you want to talk to that? or? Just that, uh, you know, we had a friend of ours who knows Chris a little bit better than some of us, and, uh, you know, he was in the hospital, uh, in the ICU for a little while. Uh, we don't really know what's going on, if he's doing better. We hope he's doing better. Uh, you know, there was a lot of uh, thoughts and prayers sent out to him through social media networks and things like that. So, uh, Brother Chris, if you do watch this show or you hear this, man, uh, hope you're doing better. Yeah. yeah, we're pulling for you. You're in our thoughts and prayers, and we hope you get better soon. Okay. Good. All righty. Other Masonic news, just from an anniversary perspective, that before we get into a major topic of St. John's Day, which is today, by the way, um, it's also the anniversary of the United Grand Lodge. Well, at the time, in 1717, was just the Grand Lodge of England. And for those who are non-Masons or don't know the, the structure, that's really where it all started, or at least recorded Freemasonic history. Um, can be traced to 1717, June 24th, where uh, four lodges got together and said, you know what, we need some rules, we need some structure, let's let's start a Grand Lodge. And so that's really where everything has been, been structured around since then. And so that happened in 1717, almost 300 years ago today. Yeah, and subsequently you have... Uh several Grand Lodges from around the world who also chartered on the same date because of that. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so it's a very important Masonic Day, um, just being, you know, St. John's Day, which we'll talk talk about later. But what I think is really fascinating, too, if you think about it, we live in a time right now where we are literally three years away from the tricentennial of the Grand Lodge of England, which is fascinating that we, we live in that time and we can celebrate that. And I've heard nothing about any big events planned, but you, you've got to hope that someone now is starting to think about a big activity going on 
in, yeah. in England, right? <clears throat> well, I almost wonder, you know, they do that uh, huge uh, conference every year. Um, so this year uh, it's in Brazil or somewhere down in South America I covered on Wentz Came You. And uh, next year, in 2015, the huge <clears throat> conference is going to be in uh, San Francisco. So I almost wonder maybe if there's going to be plans to, to do something like that at the Grand Lodge in England. Yeah, there's going to be a blowout in uh, Big Farmington. Oh yeah, it's which oddly enough is actually my lodge is 150th. So what? I really? Know. So I'm having to plan that out too. So you know, I'm like, nice. oh maybe we should uh, process somewhere, you know, because in 2017. That's what we do. Yeah. Uh, tw- uh. Yep. 2017. We were oh, chartered wow. in 1867. So we were actually <laughs> chartered by returning Civil War vets. So. Oh, cool. Like, it's, it's like life keeps coming up to you, and as like the mother-in-law saying, "You didn't eat enough. You didn't. Eat enough. <laughs> you got more on your." Plate. <laughs> so somewhere, somewhere around the Masonic Roundtable episode 176, <laughs> we will cover the tricentennial of the United Grand Lodge of England, and we'll have a lot of great stuff for you. It'll be on the website. It'll be great. You actually probably did the math, didn't you, right? I did the math. <laughs> yeah. The tercentenary or whatever it is, right? What is the it? Tricentennial or whatever you tercent- want. Tercent... Oh, man. It's like this beautifully long, weird-sounding word, and I'm like, that's awesome, but I can't spell it, you know? It's like, forget, <laughs> it. forget it. Webster, you do it. <laughs> so if there was a big event, like, let's just say, in England... Would you guys go? Would you oh, buy yeah. a ticket and try okay, to yeah. partake and spend a week out there or so? I mean, it's yeah. a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity if you really think about it. I'd make plans for that. Mm-hmm. I'd <laughs> max my credit card out. <laughs> <laughs> How about you, Juan, Nick? I'll say it's three years away. <laughs> it's it's looking seen. doubtful right now. <laughs> hey, Juan, Juan, I'll pay for it, man. I got equity in my house. Okay. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> more. How, how much is three years of plasma donations? I'm trying to figure it out. <laughs> I can't do that much math tonight. Sorry. <laughs> uh, I don't do very good math any night, so you know. <laughs> All right, so we talked about how St. John's Day is an important Masonic day where a lot of lodges and grand lodges have been chartered. <clears throat> who is the St. John? And for those who aren't familiar, Freemasonry has really two patron saints. We have St. John the Baptist and St. John the Evangelist. You guys want to elaborate on those dates and how they're significant to start with, and then we can draw down into the man himself? Well, you always know, you can always tell which day is St. John the Baptist Day and St. John the Evangelist Day because you want to get baptized when it's warm if you're getting baptized outside. So St. John the Baptist Day is actually on the summer solstice or or somewhere thereabouts. And uh, St. John the Baptist, of course, was um, the harbinger of the Christ. He, He heralded Christ's coming. Uh, in the Bible, and uh, you know, paved the way for for Christ's ministry in a lot of ways. Mm-hmm. Now, there's actually some religious groups who view that Saint John the Baptist is the light of the world, uh, in contradiction to some mainstream Christianity sects. So, huh. Yep, they actually the exist on the Euphrates River, and they've been uh, chased around uh, Iraq. So, hmm. yeah. see the the smallest you you are. <laughs> The encyclopedia. Oh, well, you know, the thing is, actually, what's really funny, you know, talking about Saint, the Nativity of St. John, um, in England there are four days called the Quarter Days, and those are uh, the Nativity of St. John the Baptist, or St. John's Day, that's what we call it, uh, Michael Moss, Christmas, and then Lady Day, which is around when we pay our taxes, you know, oddly enough. <laughs> But, uh, you know, and actually originally the Grand Lodge, if you look in Anderson's Constitution, um, met on all four of those days. It actually held quarterly communications because, you know, it makes sense because those are the days of rents when rents would be paid. So everybody would be back in the city anyway. So, you know, all the lodges would be able to gather together. They'd be able to do their their work as well. And everybody had all kinds of money because they just got paid. So, you know, it's... It made perfect sense, you know, in terms of just a practical reason to be able to just pick, you know, St. John the Baptist Day and then St. John the Evangelist Day because you can't ignore the beautiful parallel between the two. Mm-hmm. 
Well, and actually, the uh, the first instance, uh, the first recorded instance in Masonic history of uh, of Saint John the Baptist as a patron saint was what the late 1500s. Uh, uh, you talking about the first time it was mentioned in uh, lodge rolls? Yes. I thought it said like 1449 or. 14. Oh yeah, late 15th century. Mm -hmm. Yeah, late 1400s. So yeah. this this there is were, a long-standing tradition. There were Saint John societies existing before that, even. Um, I'm not sure on the dates. I had them up a little while ago. But. So just a few years before 1717, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, just a few. Right. Time um, immemorial. Right. So it's not really, you know, a made-up date for masonry. That this was, you know, a, a religious saint's day, right? And that. <laughs> Masonry has kind of overlaid on and taken the beauty of the, the symbology they're in and aligned to. Yeah, some of the some of the history on it basically says that uh, in in these in these uh, you know ancient years past, it says that uh, a lot of London trades, the different trades adapt or adopted like patron saints for their uh, each professions. So the note that I have up here, uh, it says goldsmiths, they had a patron saint who was Dun St. Dunstan, uh, represented to have been a brother artisan. Uh, the merchant tailors, another branch of the draping business, marked their connection with it by selecting St. John the Baptist, who is the harbinger of the Holy Lamb, so adopted by the drapers. Uh, the popularity probably lent to the elevation. Uh, so several um, organizations basically adopted that. And then popular is St. John the Evangelist. And so they say that's why you know some lodges, the lodges may have actually uh, adopted them as patron saint because they were the two most popular. But, of course, there's no, there's nothing written. Mm -hmm. Nick probably knows a whole lot more about it, actually. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'd, actually, a guy sent me a, a, a paper today, a real good buddy of mine, and uh, he said, actually, they started changing when they would meet from the summer to the winter because most everyone would leave town you know because most of this is London history and they'd leave town because you know in the summer London smelled terrible you know, it was <laughs> decaying I mean terrible. and so you know they switched everything to St. John the Evangelist Day so you know even though the Grand Lodge of England was founded on St. John the Baptist Day you know you'll notice that the United Grand Lodge of England on the other hand was founded in on December 27th 1813 so St. John the Evangelist Day, because, you know, then they could, they knew everyone would be back because they were not having to avoid the smell, essentially. Huh. Huh. Yeah, I like also the, the connection with astronomy. Uh, when, you, when you think, I, I do this uh, when I try, when I have significant dates or things that I'm going to do in my business or in my family, I see and I try as much as possible to align them with specific moments in the year or dates that are significant. So there's a higher likelihood that, you know, for many years to come, we'll always remember that special date, what happened on this day. So when you think of astronomy and St. John's Day being in the summer solstice, this is a celebration that predates many of the religions we're talking about this is something that has been observed from time immemorial so this is a date that's significant e even millennia uh, ago yeah. to kind of lend to that there's a really good astronomical explanation that kind of dives into that um, but keeping conversations on the level I won't go into it but if you are a mason check out a book called symbology by a gentleman named Pottinger and there's a a section in there that email me wcypodcast at gmail dot com and I'll, I'll tell you what chapter and paragraph. But it's really cool. And we'll post the uh, the link to the book up on the show notes here in the next couple of days. So because it started as a religious festival and not so much a Masonic festival, there are feasts of Saint John mm -hmm. the Baptist. There are feasts of Saint John the Evangelist. Nick, did you want to talk to your latest St. John's Day celebration? Oh, you mean the controversial one that got that got all kinds of nasty comments on uh, Reddit? Hey. That one? Oh, why, sure. Why, why did people have nasty comments? Yeah, I missed that. Yeah. Uh, well, you see, 
Start from the beginning. Yes, let, let's begin at the beginning. <laughs> let's start at the very beginning. This fireside <laughs> chat with Nick Johnson on this um, week's Chief Yeah, 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 exactly. Um, so anyway, I used to be a dual member of Faribault Lodge Number 9 and Faribault. Um, I, I no longer am. I, I, you know, I just did it just to help him out. But one of the events that we planned three years ago was to um, kind of revive an old tradition, which is to um, open a lodge in full regalia, um, call the lodge to refreshment, process from the lodge, and attend divine services at a local house of worship, and then process back to the lodge. Uh, and then close it, and then have a picnic or a feast afterwards. And so we've been doing that for three years. The first year we were at the, Episco uh, at the Episcopal Cathedral, the first cathedral in the United States. And then we went over to the Congregationalist Church this year, and then through some weird stuff we had to go to the Congregationalist Church again. And, you know, it's a great way to have the community see us. You know, it's a, it's a wonderful way to really celebrate um, um, essentially a holiday that is special almost only to Masons. Um, so, you know, we, we go in, we wear our full regalia, um, mm. I'm wearing my apron, my collar, you know, we sit in for services. It's a special communication, so you're not required to go if you don't want to, obviously, for comfort so I had a reasons. Question on that. You actually wear your, your apron in a church? Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, I know. And actually, the thing is that historically, that that's been that's been a tradition for many, many, many years. I mean, centuries. William Preston, who was, uh, you know, our 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 William Preston, uh, was actually expelled from the, I think it was the Moderns, because he had left from the lodge told the lodge, you know what, we don't need their permission. We're going to process on our own to the church. Went to the church. Uh, in full regalia, and was expelled. But he wasn't expelled because they went to the church, because that was a common thing at the time. It was because he hadn't gotten permission from the Grand Lodge. You know, uh, this was at the time when they, you know, were still working out who was in charge, right? And so, but yeah, it's a very old tradition, and actually, most Prince Hall Grand Lodges will do this every single year. You know, the one here does every year, and you know, it's. So it's, how was the turnout for your event? Pretty good. Oh, yeah, it was pretty good. Uh, not as good as uh, two years ago, but it's been just crazy hot. Yeah. Th this year, so. <clears throat> now I'm curious to your reaction, John, um, because you ask him if he was able to sit in the house of worship in full regalia. Is it not permissible in in your jurisdiction? Well, I don't know about if, if you can speak about it. No, about the specifics, but. I mean, just really what weirded me out at first was, I don't know if I would ever wear an apron to church, but I don't know why. Well, <laughs> just, if it's, it's, in, it's a if foreign it's, concept. That's really where I'm going. Well, it, it kind of is and isn't. For me, it, it has a connotation of death, just because the only time I've ever worn an apron in church was for a Masonic funeral mm -hmm. that I took part of. So just going in and, and attending church, even if you're under the umbrella of a call of communication and it's permissible Masonically, it, it still it strikes me as a little odd. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The only time I've ever worn uh, anything Masonic in a church was when I had a pin on. Um, and <laughs> I was told to leave. So. <laughs> no way. Uh, that particular the... church. So uh, it was... I'll tell you... So what I did was I, uh, I took a, a lesson from uh, my mentor, Brother Carmen, and I put on a bigger belt <laughs> in, and I went back. Nice. <laughs> you know, the reason I ask is because here in Florida, I remember reading in the Digest that we are not supposed to be in a house of worship wearing Masonic regalia. Really? However, <laughs> I do know that in the Digest as well, it talks about a similar... Uh, a similar event where it's opened and then the the lodge is goes from labor to refreshment and then everybody goes on a procession. But I don't know if going to a house of worship could be part of that procession, and if so, could we be within the house of worship with the regalia? See, and I remember this. Uh -huh. 
Oh, here you get a dispensation for the Grandmaster. So gotcha. every year you just, you have to just have get a dispensation. In Illinois, we do. Like if any time we're outside the lodge with aprons on, there has to be a dispensation granted from Grand Lodge. Yep, yep, yep. yep. In Virginia, we're encouraged to participate in St. John's Day's activities with our own faith, our own background, right? But not... I mean, it doesn't say not in a Masonic context, but it's just more of, hey, remember the St. John's. Yeah, we get we get a communication um, every St. John's Day from the Grand Lodge that basically says, you know, if if you know you are so inclined, please remember the day and visit a house of worship uh, in honor of of St. John's. Um, yeah, and that's kind of that's about it. That's about it from the Grand Lodge of Virginia. <laughs> See, and I've and I've been pushing, you know, to see if we can make not necessarily attend services, you know, at the local Islamic center or anything like that, but at least see if they'd be willing to have us just show up, you know, welcome ourselves to the community, because the whole idea behind it is, you know, you're you're introducing yourself to the community and saying, hi, you know, we are here. Yeah, you know, community awareness, something yeah. that every lodge in every jurisdiction somewhat struggles with, so. But yeah. we're a secret society. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. Nick, I, I gotta I gotta stop you there and just ask. So what's with the haters on Reddit? What happened? <laughs> oh, you know, it, it's 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 one of those that I don't know. I guess I guess you well, know, I, I, just like you guys, you just you know, you guys also had kind of concerns too as well. But I mean, I, oh, and I I shouldn't say that they were haters necessarily, but it was just you know they were concerned because you know there's this universality concept within Freemasonry and, and that you went to a church uh, and you went to a Christian church church. and people will be uncomfortable and they'll, okay. they'll put the label on Masons equal Christian and you know I, I don't know if that's necessarily fair to say that you know well so like, hence hence your reasoning for wanting to uh, frequent another house of worship maybe next year or something. exactly hmm. yeah there was there was an interesting um, thread on all things Masonic on Facebook um, maybe only about two or three days ago where a brother said, you know, do you actually wear any Masonic pins or jewelry to your own house of worship? I was like, heck yes, I'm in the worship team and I've got the belt buckle and the pin and the <laughs> ring and everything. <laughs> so, you know, this is this is this idea of whether or not you should, you know, display your affiliation publicly in a, in a house of sectarian worship is not a, a new question that people have been asking. In fact, um, I've been known to take my Masonic Bible to church. So it has the big square encompass on the front. Um, but what's nice is if they're referencing something that pulls from some of the allegories in the Masonic ritual, I can reference some of the, for those who don't know, some Masonic Bibles actually have a uh, preface that covers some, hey, you might want to read these verses that gives you a little more background of some of the stories told and that kind of thing. And it gives me a quick reference. To like, hey, that sounds familiar. Why don't I dig more into that? Um, I, I felt weird carrying it with a big square and compass on the front. Um, but that's that's about as far as I've gone. It, it, it's got to stem from just maybe <clears throat> it's like the first time you ever do public speaking, maybe, where you're a little bit freaked out with what people are going to say to you afterward. That's a good point. You know, So if you're carrying that in there, you're a little bit leery of, Who's gonna say something to me? Are my friends from church gonna, you know, go? Oh, you know, but probably not. I mean, if they're your, yeah, you know, your I haven't had any nothing issues. so far. Yeah. yeah. Well, all, all, all the old, all the news for them to see. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, no. Go ahead. Go ahead. That you know, all all that would need to happen is for someone to notice the symbol, and if they're not completely aware of what we're about. Then that could start a whole conflict. Yeah. You know, I know. Or um, a great positive discussion. Yeah. Yeah. You wish. <laughs> <laughs> so, full disclosure, when I met Jason, we met through a mutual friend, and through discussion, we found out we went to the same church. Yep. That's crazy. Like, dude, I know you. And, like, oh, you're married to so and so. And, you know. <laughs> John and I are essentially the same person, but uh, yeah, you know, one of the things that I was struggling with as I was, you know, looking at Freemasonry was, you know, okay, as as a devout Christian, you know, is this something that's right for me to do? And uh, this my mentor um, 
actually uh, introduced me to John, who was uh, a Christian as well, and you know, here we are on the Masonic Roundtable, you know, <laughs> two years later. That's true. Talking with two Johns about St. John's Day. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> now, I, I, I wanted to mention one thing. Um, today, you know, June 24th, uh, St. John's Day, happens to be the reason why my name is Juan. No way. Really? Yeah. <clears throat> my father was named after the patron saint John on June 24th. So today is my dear father's 68th birthday. Happy and birthday. Nice. Happy birthday. I hope he is watching, or if not, oh well. <laughs> no, he'll probably listen to it later, so happy birthday to him. And it, it I learned about it far uh, when I was an adult that it had one thing had to do with the other. Um, but it actually led me to start trying to understand how does this whole thing work? Like, why was he named after a saint? Uh, in Puerto Rico, uh, the June 24th, actually the night leading to June 24th, there is a big celebration. In Puerto Rico, it is a big deal for everybody. It's mainly, you know, Christians and Catholics. And there is a ceremony that is done on the night of the 23rd. Everybody gathers together around a body of water, whether it's a lake or the beach or a pool. And on the, <clears throat> excuse me, when the clock strikes midnight, everybody walks backwards into the body of water, let's say to the beach, and they have to jump backwards into the water almost as a symbolism of being baptized. And they have to do it seven times. So they come out of the water and they fall into the water. So for me, it was always a really cool night because we actually got to go to the beach in the middle of the night, <laughs> and it was we were celebrating my father's birthday. So today's a very special day. That is awesome, man. Did you all do that in bathing suits, or did you have like absolutely full clothes naked. on? No, no, naked. It's part of the whole. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <okay. laughs> no, no, in, in swimming trunks or whatever. <laughs> well, no, I was thinking, you know, church clothes or what have you. But but see, that also sounds like almost a feast of St. John, because that's really where things kind of cover the gap between those actual saints and the, the dates we know today. There were these feasts of St. John, and not being in a faith that really celebrates saints, I've never been to any feast of any saints at all, nonetheless, John the Baptist. So has anyone else been to a, a feast day? Yeah, yeah. Really? St. John's Day feast, I mean, but that's it. Yeah. I mean, at Lodge, at Oh, church, yeah, yeah, or... I'm sorry. It was... <laughs> we, went, <laughs> we, we went to... I was in the Fellowship Lodge in uh, in Flint, Michigan. Um, it was a, a really nice event. I actually went with uh, Brother Charles Harper and uh, a couple other really uh, good brothers that we know. Uh, we drove up there. He was presenting um, his, uh, his, uh, his lecture on Freemasonry in black and white, his book, and... Uh, it was a really good, uh, really good day. We had dinner. There were prospective members there. Um, I think they took two or three petitions that day. Wow. Um, which was which was really cool, you know. Um, <laughs> so those guys were free to the feast. Everybody else had to pay like ten bucks. Everybody leaves with a little uh, cannon shot glass, you know. And in uh, in Michigan, the the rule is it's a festive board, so it's not an open lodge. It's a masonic, and it's and it's a Masonic event, so they do allow spirits. So uh, they charge the cannon and they shoot the cannon and reload it several times. That was a good time. Cool. Yeah, I think uh, I think Williamsburg Lodge Number Six down in uh, Williamsburg, Virginia, had a uh, a feast of Saint John um, tonight. And uh, in addition to that, there was also the traditional observance lodge out in uh, D.C. Lodge of the Nine Muses that had a, a festive board for uh, Saint John's Day as well. Good. Are we all invited to that? Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, they, they may be wrapping up now. Nice. <laughs> 
Okay, I'm checking the time, and it is about the half hour mark. Yeah. Let's go to the social webs. Wow, we've got quite a few notifications. We did come prepared because Lance Cates um, sent us a message early and asked, why St. John and not St. Peter for Masons, or St. Christopher for Travelers, or St. Sebastian for Stonemasons? Why specifically does Freemasonry treat St. John the Baptist and St. John the Evangelist as their patron saints? So again, it, it, it harkens back like from what I've read to um, what these specific uh, tailors and like tradesmen would uh, associate with the uh, with a patron saint. So St. John was, uh, the, the Baptist was um, really popular to choose. And actually, there is a quote here that says, almost exactly, uh, it says, uh, it's a quote, and it says, St. John the Baptist was stern and just intolerant of shame, of pretense of weakness, a man of strength and fire, uncomprom uncompromising with evil or expediency, and yet withal courageous, humble, sincere, magnanimous. A character at once heroic, of rugged nobility, of him the greatest of teachers. So uh, it says the greatest of teachers said, among them there are born of women, uh, there hath not arisen a greater than John the Baptist. So in, uh, I think in a lot of the countries where Christian Mason were Christian. I shouldn't say Christian Mason. That's not that's not correct. Uh, where Christianity is heavy influence in that society, and uh, a lot of the Masonic lodges that have that uh, as their uh, main uh, religion in the lodge, and they use the Holy Bible. I think that may have been when that was probably adopted. Uh, using both those saints because of the popularity, because uh, the religion of the day that was popular um, probably had a lot to do with it. In fact, probably mostly to do with it. Mm -hmm. Great. On Twitter, we also had a shout-out from Richard Ingham, just wishing us a happy St. John's Day. So happy St. John's Day, everybody. Indeed. Happy St. John's. And really, you know, for Masons, what we're supposed to do is really reflect on the characters of both the Saints John, but more, more especially today, St. John the Baptist, and what what characteristics, as, as you, you described, how, we're, well, how we should be working to emulate that, right? Matt Bott says he's going to have a barbecue on the 300th anniversary of <laughs> the tricentennial. So, uh, I'm going to go ahead and assume that we're all invited to it, and anybody who's listening to the, the podcast or watching it is also invited. The C. Matt Bots uh, of Texas. Diversity Lodge, number 330, and he'll hook you up. He'll get you the address. Lots of hot dogs. I'm, I'm going to be in so much trouble for that. <laughs> Let's see. You um, are the grand inviter. <laughs> he's got three years to prepare. He should be fine. Yeah, plenty yeah, of time. Go. Send the RSVPs now, and you're good to go. Uh, let's see. We had a reference to... John the Baptist getting decapitated, too. Yeah, you know there's a tavern called St. John the Baptist's Head Tavern, and it's in England, and their signpost outside has his head on a signpost, on, on a platter. Ooh, wow. What? Sure. Now, is yeah. that also on the menu, or... Uh... Yeah. So no, the, like the Feast of St. John does not <laughs> actually reference... It's, just, the, it's head cheese. It's just a side of St. John. <laughs> well, it's... A side of St. John. <laughs> In that tavern, uh, when they serve your beer, they serve it like that, so it doesn't have a head. Oh. <laughs> okay, okay. Oh, man. Let's go back can, to the interwebs. Yeah, can we just stop now? <laughs> um, and Matt Botts, remember the one with the barbecue in three years, also mentioned that they do a fifth Sunday and both a St. John's Day as well. In full regalia, I would assume. Wow. At the place of worship. At the place of worship. They said yeah. some issues have arisen in the past, but you know they just kind of play it by ear and feel it out. So um, it's. It, I think it's a good measure to, as Nick said, show who you are. That <laughs> most of us do have a religious faith that we continue to support, and it's not one or the other. It's both, and that um, 
Masonry really supports our religious beliefs. It doesn't replace them in any way, and so I think that's really the intent. Mm -hmm. well, that's a me, very important point. Go ahead, Nick. Oh, Go ahead. and, uh, you know, the thing is, it's kind of funny. A lot of people are saying, well, I'll feel uncomfortable going there, and I'm sitting there going, well, why? I mean, if, if you're not a Christian, I mean, you don't have to worry about the service because you can just ignore it. If you're going to a synagogue and you're not Jewish, you know, I mean, essentially it's not going to affect you. So it's, I don't know. I... I I, I was a little angrier this morning than I am now, because I thought my picture was beautiful, and I was like expecting like a million upvotes because I'm a uh, obsessed with karma. And then all of a sudden, it was like, "You're evil," and I was like, "Yeah, that, that's a shame." I mean, myself, you know, I'm not what you would call a, a typical Christian in any sense of the word, um, but yet I still love the the celebration of the Saints John um, based on the principle of what they are said to have stood for and did in their lives. You know, they're good things. They're good, upstanding people in their lives. <clears throat> so, you know, anybody who would feel offended or weird about going to church about it, you really need to think about those mm -hmm. things. You know, it's not just about... I mean, it's very heavily uh, influenced and for people who are Christian, absolutely, but I think... Also, you can find yourself being just fine, you know, participating under those other pretenses. Yeah, and and that's a that's a very good point. Something that you know, I encourage the brothers that are watching and listening. I encourage you to think, you know, take a moment to think about this. If you are of a particular religion, it is going to be an impulse. It's going to be natural for you to feel something when something that goes. Uh, that something that is different from your religion is presented, uh, but that's how you keep your your passions within due bounds. You you're you're given there an opportunity to exercise that that restraint. Maybe you felt something initially, but then you remind you remind yourself we're supposed to be tolerant to one another. There's a very good reason why we don't speak about religious topics within the lodge, just to keep that harmony and that every religion has this common thread. Of you know virtue and morality that hopefully we've been able to to discuss and and apply to our lives. So there's much to learn from all religions. Doesn't mean you have to you know adopt them as your own. Right. That's all we've got on the interwebs. So let's start wrapping up. And now's the time to get your final comments, shameless plugs, and final thoughts. And we'll start with Nick. Oh, sure. Uh, my name is Nick Johnson. Uh, I have a blog called the Millennial Freemason uh, com. I, you know, it's French. It, it's it's French. Um, say we. Oui. Uh, you know, the, my final thought is, you know, it's kind it's kind of hard to explain it, but you know, for me, it's one of those that we're we're given two holidays in Masonry that are pretty special to us that, you know, I mean, if we did meet on the quarter days, you know, everybody met on the quarter days, but for us, we meet on two specific days and for two saints. And it's really a wonderful time to meet with your brothers, find an activity, just have a picnic. You know, that's kind of how the whole thing started down with Faribault, is that we just kind of were like, hey, let's have a picnic. That's awesome, you know, eating food with the family. And it just kind of grew from there. And, you know, it's it's really a time for lodges just to sit down and celebrate masonry. It's 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 really ours, you know, in terms of celebrations. So, um, Let's see. Millennialformason.com. I also do the Sonic Monday question that I don't even know how to find it. So, you know, I don't know. Um, and then I'm also on reddit.com slash r slash freemasonry. I'm a mod there. That's about it. I'll pass it off to Juan. Off to Juan. All right. Well, uh, I, I I appreciate the topic. Um, I like, you know, that we talk about some. We do an overall discussion about what the St. John's Day celebration, but there is so much more uh, about it. We will be sharing some links. There's already some articles that. We've been passing around. We want to learn a little bit more about it. Um, but 
that's what we do uh, at the, the Masonic Roundtable. We find topics that we are interested in about. Hopefully you share in that interest and you gain a little bit from listening to us and then you go and do a little bit more research on your own and continue searching for more light uh, on your own accord. Uh, I want to give a special thanks to Brother Ken Lottman from Texas. He sent me a handwritten parchment letter. Ooh. Beautiful, beautiful. He has very nice penmanship, and he also sent me <laughs> a... <laughs> uh, so he sent this, this to me with very encouraging words. I think I wanted to thank him uh, publicly for that. And thank you to everybody who listens to my podcast, The Winding Stairs. You can find it at thewindingstairs.com, and you can see some of the art that I uh, that I've created related to masonry at freemasonryart.com. Thank you again. Great. Back to the room here. Let's start with Robert Johnson. <clears throat> oh, geez. Okay. <laughs> uh, so uh, if you. Uh, like masonry and you like podcasts, check out my show. It's wcypodcast.com. It stands for Whence Came You. Um, we'll be doing episode 150 coming out Sunday night. Wow. And um, didn't think it'd be going this long. So I just want to thank everybody for all the support and uh, encouraging words along the way, donations, everything you guys have done. Uh, I can't thank you guys enough. I mean, it really, really means a lot to me. Uh, happy St. John's Day to everybody out there. Uh, special happy birthday again to Juan's dad. I think that's really awesome. Uh, thank you. Thank you, for, thank you for sharing the story. It really means a lot. Mm -hmm. I think. That's cool. Thank and you. Uh, that's it. So support uh, Grand Lodge Charities and all that good stuff. So uh, I'm done. Jason. Okay. <laughs> all right. Thanks, John. Um, you know, just one final thought. I, I think the idea of having lodges dedicated to St. John the Baptist and St. John the Evangelist is just really fantastic because they're, they're in a, a large sense just polar opposites from each other. You have the fervency and zeal and the reserved introspective. And it really creates a, a great metaphor for our, our life as, as men of virtue and honor because we, we have to pull from all different directions and we have to keep everything in a balance all the time. So I really love the fact that, uh, that we have patron saints in, uh, you know, uh, uh, in organizations such as, such as masonry. So it's, it's just something to, to think about. Thank you all so much for listening on iTunes, for watching us on YouTube, for checking out our website, www.themasonicroundtable.com. Uh, we'll be posting some show notes like we uh, like we always do in the next couple days. Um, check out my blog, uh, The Two-Foot Ruler, Freemasonry in Plain Language. Um, I'll have a couple posts coming out here in the, the next couple weeks as we uh, gear up toward July 4th. And with that, I'll pass it off to you. Great. I mean, you really covered a lot of what I was going to say as far as checking out the website and you know, thanking you all for, for your support. To be brief, I'll also say, and kind of inspired me there, was to say, we've talked a little bit about what they represent, right? What the, what the St. John's represent. And so really think about that. And for those so inclined, you know, dig deeper, right? Find what the symbolic meaning is of, you know, the, the opposite ends of the spectrum of what each of those saints represented, how, you know, how it shows up in, in other texts. And so uh, you'll find a lot more... Um, just a lot more behind that if, if you choose to go go there. So um, open up a book, and if you need a place to start, let us know. Uh, with that, support your Grand Lodge Charities, and basically, thanks for watching, and keep searching for more light. Have a good night.